We're going to talk about what has happened in Ukraine on this day of the Russian invasion. We'll examine the actions and the strategies, both military and political. Now, if this is your first time watching, my name is Darren Gertis. I'm a professor who has built multiple leadership programs at Charleston Southern University. So we'll also view these events through the lens of leadership. And I also wrote a book about Zelensky called I Need Ammunition, Not a Ride, and you can find it on Amazon. Okay, it's day 110, 110 days of this thing. And um, as I think Zelensky's summary of it in his speech today was about as good as I'm going to do of just trying to paint a picture of what, what has happened through the war. So I'm just going to go through the highlights here. He said this, quote, today is the 110th day of our defense. And when you say that, the 110th day, you realize what a great path we have covered. The enemy was driven out of Z Zitomor. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sorry. Kiev or Kiev. I'm sorry. I pronounce it the old way because that's what I heard when I was a kid. Kiev, Cherniv, and Sumy regions. A large part of the Kharkiv region was liberated. In total, more than a thousand settlements have been liberated. The invasion of the occupiers in the south of Ukraine was stopped. Yes, they still want to destroy Mykolaiv, Zaporizhia, and the cities of the, the Dnipropetrovsk region. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm American. Uh, please forgive me. They still have enough strength to shoot from the art uh, from the artillery at Zelendosk and Holopol. Odessa remains a target for the Russian fleet, but dozens of the attacking attempts of the Russian army have already been thwarted right there in the south. And thanks to the counteroffensive, some community communities in the Kurzan region have already been liberated. In the battles in the Donbas, the Ukrainian army and our intelligence tactically still beat the Russian military, and this despite the significant advantage of the Russians in the amount of equipment and especially artillery systems, and they are heavily outgunned in artillery. They're firing, the, the Ukrainians are right now firing about one for every 10 uh, artillery shell that the Russians fire at them because they have to conserve their artillery. And that's a terrible place to be. Okay, so that recap showed just how far they've come over three months. And in Donbass, in spite of everything, in spite of bridges being blown out and lack of artillery and all these other obstacles they're still holding, which is, it's tremendous. Um, Zelensky had this, um, this speech about a month, month and a half ago, where he said, our brand is bravery. He's right. I mean, I, I have nothing but high marks for Zelensky as a leader or the Ukrainian people uh, as being brave and standing up and defending themselves. Okay, the Washington Post reported all bridges leading to Severodonetsk have been destroyed. Um, and if that's right, then there are in a world of hurt, uh, being pretty trapped in Severodonetsk. The UK Ministry of Defense said that over the coming months, river crossings, opera, river crossing operations are likely to be amongst the most important determining factors in the course of the war. Who would have thought rivers are the most important factor in the course of the war? Um, and that's right, because that that river separating um, uh, Severodonetsk from its sister city is going to be very pivotal and it's it's uh, yet to be determined whether that army is going to be able to hold or they're going to be able to rain artillery down and take more or get these people out or just what. Zelensky spent the rest of his speech addressing the occupied Ukrainians of various cities and this was a great message. Just think about the tone. If you're if you're a Ukrainian and you're hearing this from your leader, uh, what, are you, what are you saying? He's talked about, he spoke to the various cities, Herzan, Endohar, Melitopol, Mariupol, with the promise of liberation. And I'm going to read you one sample paragraph. He said, we will come to Mariupol and we will liberate the city for the third time. It was liberated from the Nazis in 1943 by a brilliant operation. In 2014, on this day, June 13th, thanks to the courage of our Azov and other units, Mariupol was liberated for the second time, liberated from the militants who at the time were not yet fully aware of what the Russian state was sending them to. And now they see it all. They see it burn Mariupol. They see why Russians came there, but we will not allow them to make the city dead. We will return it definitely. Like <laughs> that's a great speech. And that's exactly the tone that you need to hear from your leader in this kind of circumstance. 
So in Melitopol and another city, the occupying Russian authorities, and I'm quoting now, according to the uh, Institute for the Study of War, the Russian authorities may have staged false flag uh, attacks in Melitopol and Berdanesk on June 12th, that's yesterday, um, likely to accuse Ukrainian partisans of targeting civilians. So they're, they're deceitfully trying to create a, a trumped up thing. Oh, see, this is what they're doing. So we need to clamp down. Um, uh, it's all bad. In other news, political news, uh, Mikhail, uh, Mikhail Kazanov, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right either, uh, President Vladimir Putin's first prime minister, who turned opposition leader, told a French news outlet, quote, if Ukraine falls, the Baltic states will be next. Okay, that's going to mean World War Three. So uh, Zelensky's right if if uh, Mikhail Kaz Kazanov is right, Zelensky is right that, you know, what happens in Ukraine determines the fate of Europe. Uh, if Ukraine falls, the Baltic states will be next. And he also said that the war could take up to two years, which, wow, I mean, if, I, I mean, I'm tired just trying to document it. I can't imagine what poor Ukrainians are going through just trying to survive day by day uh, while they're being just shelled into oblivion. Finland's president accused the Russians of employing weapons of mass destruction in Kharkiv, and Amnesty International has confirmed that. So um, it's, it's bad they're using some cluster munitions. And they're, the Russians have lots of weapons, but they're dumb weapons now. They've kind of exhausted many of the strategic weapons, but they don't care. They're just trying to destroy everything. So dumb weapons work just as well. According to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, the risk of nuclear war is higher than it has been at any time since the Cold War ended. That's a terrible place to be. I don't think, I, I agree with the American uh, intelligence estimate that we don't think that that's going to happen, but we are closer than we have been in a long, long time. Okay, that's it for today. Come back for day 111 tomorrow. Hey, if this video was helpful, hit like to help others find it in YouTube's algorithm. Subscribe so that you can stay informed. And one more thing, if you are moved to contribute to the humanitarian aid for Ukraine, I have a link below for Samaritan's Purse. If you want to give, be sure to give only to reputable organizations. There's a lot of scammers out there. Thanks for your time.